That person has taken the proper benefit of Ramadan He has taken the proper benefit of this treasure of Allah Ramadan That individual who has this month that Allah Ta'ala has given to us Who has attained the objective of this month So that person has fully benefited from Ramadan He who has attained the objective of this month Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said O oh, mu'mineen This month Ramadan Attain taqwa Attain taqwa Allah Ta'ala has given us the full 30 days of Ramadan For this special objective Special mission to attain taqwa Taqwa. What is taqwa? Is that Allah's fear should come into the heart of a person in such a way that whenever he does a task, performs a deed, he should think, is Allah going to be displeased with this task of mine? In other words, such an emotion, such a feeling, such a state or condition should come about, such a fear should be inside his heart, that if he is about to commit uh, an, unlawf- an unlawful action, he should think, I shouldn't do this because due to this, my Lord will be unhappy with me. The reason for this is this, that Allah Ta'ala has given us the complete 30 days, the whole month, alongside that fasting, extra ibadah, extra worship deed. But the importance of Ramadan in that fasting is great. Yes, but without Allah's fear coming in our heart, we cannot save ourselves from Allah's disobedience. If I don't have fear in my heart, a person always commits a sin when whole fear of Allah comes out of his heart. Nafs and shaitan, desires and shaitan, they embolden, embolden the human being. He challenges his Lord. He clashes with his Lord and he disregards all the orders of Allah. But this is what happens. When the hope of Allah comes out of a heart, then he becomes brave. He challenges. He stands against and in his life, morning till evening, he disobeys Allah and spends time in Allah's disobedience. So taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated that to see if you have attained taqwa or not, to determine if you've attained taqwa or not, the first thing is, is that we should spend Ramadan in this way. Ramadan is in the name of just fast. Uh, that Ramadan is just for fasting, wake up in the morning, suhoor, pre-dawn meal, stay hungry all day long, and then after that, um, pass the day, and then break the fast. No. This is ibadah that Allah has given. Yes, it's one form of worship to attain the objective, to think that every day we should think in the evening, that have how much progression have we uh, gained in this objective that Allah for the reason that you gave Ramadan how much have we gone towards the objective every day we should think that as my day passed on that basis that taqwa has come into me then Allah Ta'ala just like he's told us the signs of taqwa what are the signs we should compare our lives ourselves versus the signs that have those signs come into me how many have come into me how much have I uh, attained those signs because The signs that Allah Ta'ala has mentioned in the Qur'an for taqwa, according to that a person, he should look at his fasts, he should look at his day, and he should see that this day, uh, the objective that Allah Ta'ala has given me, the fast for, have I, have I passed this day according to that, to those principles? 
So there are some signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, defined and told us that we can realize through those principles that we can determine has taqwa coming to me. Remember, we discussed that the first sign of taqwa is that a person's iman is revived, it's refreshed. And the next sign that we've been told by Allah to determine if taqwa has come, a sign of taqwa is that a person starts to pray salah. Allah ta'ala gave us such a Ramadan. And the third factor, the third sign of taqwa, that taqwa has come into a person, has developed in a person. Develop. وَمِمَّا رَزَقَنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقَنَاهُمْ That that is a physical ibadah salah and the most important ibadah worship. According in terms of financially, is to spend. Yunfiqun. Spending, we say yes, I spend a lot. Uh, I spend, um, yes, of course. Uh, we're muttaqis, we spend a little bit. How can uh, that, of course, how do you spend? Yes, I bought a new house and I've taken out a, a new car and I spend a lot on food and drink. We've installed a new carpet at home. I spend a lot, mashallah. Whenever I go shopping, uh, I buy new shoes, new clothes and new items and I, I spend a lot. I'm a muttaqi. So spending here, what does this mean? Just like about fast, it stated that the fast, Allah Ta'ala stated that this is the month for um, spending on those who have pain, not spending on yourself, but for Allah's pleasure to spend in the path of Allah. Subhanallah, not on your own self, you spend a lot, but spend that. وَمِمَّا رَزَقَنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ means that those who spend in the path, in the way of Allah, for the sake of Allah, alhamdulillah, this is that person who's progressed. What is Allah's way for the sake of Allah, in the path of Allah? The path of Allah, in the way of Allah, in reality is what? That there's a human being. To spend on a human being is spending in the way of Allah. And it's also stated, When you spend... That spending that I'm ordering you to do, it's not your wealth, subhanallah. It's not your wealth, is it? Allah says, وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَهُمْ The wealth I gave you, subhanallah. Subhanallah. That your warehouse that is running. And if I want, I want to send any customers to you. Who sends the customers? I send, Allah says, and it's due to the customer, I give you money. You stand at your shop, I send your turnover to you, you work, I give you your salary, Allah says. It's my money that is with you, it's my trust. It's my trust. And whoever owns that wealth, that trust, then obviously we have to spend according to his preference and desire. Or do we spend according to our desires? If I give you 100 pounds and I say that this is my 100 pounds, look after it. And when I take it back from you, the way I say, spend it in the way I tell you. Then if I say 30, give to him, you'll give it. If I say, okay, 15, give to him, you'll give to him. So it's my money. I'm instructing you, guiding you. You've kept it, the, looked after it, the way I tell you, you're spending it. So however much we've been given, whatever I've got, you've got, whatever is present at this moment in time in our home, outside, wherever, our Wealth, Allah says, the money I've given to you, the wealth I've given to you. So I tell you spend. So where should you spend? Allah Ta'ala tells us. Two things Allah Ta'ala has told us. Zakah. Zakah is the greatest action. Just like Salah is a deed, wherever Salah is mentioned, Zakah is mentioned. Zakah, that this much percentage, this much you need to give to the poor. This is fard on you in all ways or forms. You must uh, distribute this. And the, here, if we look at how many excuses we present, the fraud, don't ask. We try so much that we give the minimum amount. Can we save? Can I save the car from this? Can I save from this? We use taxation methodologies and uh, routines, and uh, we ask ulama, the respected scholars. I do this. Can I reduce? Do I have to pay the on this? We tighten our grip so much, so much that I should give minimum amount of zakat. Uh, may, Allah know, uh, may Allah forgive. Allah Ta'ala says, I gave this to you. I'm instructing you to spend. So remember, if Allah Ta'ala tells us to spend, then He will increase our wealth. He won't reduce it. He won't reduce it. The more you spend in the path of Allah, it's fard. Allah says, the wealth I've given to you, I'm instructing you, give that much percent in my way. Take it out of your wealth, the cash, and give it to the poor. So first thing here is a fard, is zakah. But there's something in addition to that. 
yunfiqoon. And this means that sadaqat, optional, extra, voluntary payments, payouts to those who need this emotion, if it comes into us, to spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the sign that that person has got taqwa. Taqwa is inside the person. So this taqwa. So this is the month for, for sharing, for caring, for distributing to those who have pain. And so who do we need to give the money to? To the poor people, those in need who have requirements. Allah has made a system in the world. This is how the world uh, is, is moving. Yes, that Allah says, you could be poor and he could be rich. Above you in terms of wealth, a person, poor soul who's asking for money, sat on the pavement and you're passing by in a car and you've got money in your wallet, in your pocket, could be the case. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have replaced you, and put you on the pavement and put that person in the car. This could be the system. Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made such a system in the dunya that Allah ta'ala tests between people. Allah gives poverty to one, wealth to another. Allah gives us wealth, He's testing us with the wealth. Yes, if He's given us things, He's given us tests. If somebody's got health, Allah's testing him with His health. Allah's given that person sickness, He's testing him with His sickness. All of these systems and the cycles of the world, they run along Allah's wisdom. So every person is tested due to something, and Allah wants to test us so that He can give us paradise. This is your test, this is your subject, Allah says. This is your subject matter in life. What's your subject? That you want to take FSC, I want to do medical subjects. So he, he selects medical uh, topics and subjects. He won't, he won't go down the humanities really. So he'll take the uh, medical subjects, then he'll do FSC or BSc or MSc, the sciences. The other person, he studies the humanities or the arts. He says, I've got these subjects. So he's done an MSc, he's also done an MSc. In the same way, if there's a poor person, there may be a rich person, maybe a sick person, a healthy person. Different people in different categories, different phases of life, different challenges, different tests, different requirements. And everybody has to succeed whatever circumstances are in that person's life. So Allah will test a person. So a poor person through his poverty, he will have to pass the test and get to paradise. And a rich person, he will be tested due to his wealth and he'll have to attain paradise. A healthy person will have to pass the test based on his health and get to paradise. A person's healthy and he's passing his life properly fruitfully, correctly, positively, the way he should with the name of health, then Allah will give him paradise. If there's a poor person, if he lives his life with the low amount of things that he has got, according to Allah's preference and desire, then he will be given Jannah based on that. And when everybody goes in paradise, everybody will meet each other, rich and poor, healthy, sick, everybody will be there on the same platform. Somebody will come through the angle of poverty, through being poor, through being rich, through being unhealthy or sick. Yes, so if Allah Ta'ala has given us money, the amount of money you have, Allah says, it's my wealth, my money, give to those who need, who are in need. So we don't have that permission that we, uh, that we think it's all our money. I earned it's mine. I earned this is mine. Oh, I invested this is mine. This is mine. However much you earn a thousand, uh, this is for me. This much is my share, my right for my home, my children. And this much, this amount will go zakah, on fard zakah, and this much money uh, for Allah Ta'ala's pleasure, for Allah's happiness to attain that. Here, you take this. Seek out the poor people. Seek out those in need. Your heart should be big. This is the month for sharing, distributing in a narration. It is stated, subhanallah. Has Anas qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As Anas radiyallahu anhu stated that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated in my ummah if somebody fulfills the need of a ummati of ummati with this intention that I uh, I, I will be happy in other words, if you are fulfilling the need of that person and you're saying that he will be happy, if he's happy with me, to, to make him happy, if he assists that person to fulfill his need so that he becomes happy, subhanallah. That if somebody from my ummah, if he assists somebody in need who has a requirement so that he becomes happy when I fulfill his need, then he stated, what a great reward. Then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that when you have made a human being happy, he was hungry, gave him food, he's happy. You gave him clothes, he'd become happy. You gave him money, and you, you assisted the person. You didn't con consider it as a favor. Because it's not your mile, it's not your wealth. 
you're saying that I'm giving it, it's Allah's money, I'm giving it to the servant of Allah. So if this is the passion that you have, this is taqwa. Yes, everybody gives, but if you have this jazba, this passion, it's not my money, it's Allah's money, He gave me this wealth, and it's the trust, and I'm distributing for Allah, Allah gave me these clothes, and I'm giving it further to others who need. You go and take money out of your pocket and give to that person. If you fulfill the need of an ummati, and he becomes happy, then look at the reward that Rasulullah said, that he has then pleased me, said Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, subhanallah. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, that whoever does this action, whoever has done this action, what has he done? <laughs> then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَقَدْ سَرَانِي فَقَدْ سَرَ اللَّهِ Then he has, he has pleased me, and verily the maqam of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is such, that whoever has pleased me, then remember whoever has made me happy, said Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then he has also made Allah happy. Subhanallah. And whoever has made Allah happy, أَدْخَلَهُ الْجَنَّةِ and that person, he has gone into paradise. This is one point here we see that Jannah paradise, how it's attained. That even this we need to try that Allah's Rasul should be happy with us. Those amal deeds we should do that earn Allah's Nabi Sallallahu pleasure. That if you please me, if you make me happy, then verily, in turn, just like you, if you have from your action you make me happy, then remember my happiness will also earn you Allah's happiness. And if Allah is happy with the person, then he will enter into paradise. Subhanallah. So this is a great, great point we've learned today. And this is a big thing we are lacking. We hoard our money, we note, we count our notes and cash. We never think I should distribute it, give it to somebody, to a poor person. And Allah has made the society such. Allah has made the society such that Allah says that there are many opportunities that we can fulfill and help the assist the people's needs. Allah has created poor people. And in reality, we don't assist them. We don't assist them. The great narration, whoever has fulfilled the need of a Muslim, a person who is naked, doesn't have clothes, you've given him clothes, Allah Rabbul Izzat will give that person paradise. When a hungry person, hungry person, Muslim, somebody, if you assist him and give him food, Allah will give the fruits of paradise. If somebody is thirsty, you quench his thirst, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah paradise, he will give you the alcohol, the, 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 the alcohol, the drink from the fountain in paradise. Imagine the alcohol stamped, sealed, approved alcohol, pure, approved by Allah. Remember this. So brothers, here, yeah, it is stated this is also a sign of a muttaqi. So if I give you examples, such only Allah, walis of Allah, examples, sahabah karam, noble companions, how did they used to give alms and charity? They sat to eat, they sat to break the fast. There's the life of the noble companions of the Ahlul Bayt, subhanallah. Ahlul Bayt, family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi And there the food was made and they're hungry, they'd fasted. And with difficulty they attained that food, that wealth. And the hands going towards the food and somebody came to the door and said that in the name of Allah I'm hungry, give me some food. The hands stopped there, stopped in their tracks. And he picked up the food and gave it to that person in need. Subhanallah. Why? Because behind this they knew, behind the action, what a great reward they could see. Mansarani Allah. That, sort of, that person who please Allah will then go into paradise. He said, if I eat that food, I can. I can eat that food. After eating, what will happen after a while? I'll need to go and, uh, and urinate or go to the toilet and, and that food will go. But that person who's come in need and requested, if I give to him, Allah's Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be happy with me. And I'll become the beloved of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with this amal. So if I become the beloved of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then Allah Himself will be happy with me. What a great thing. And if Allah is happy with the person, Allah's Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is happy with the person, then will Jannah be far from that person? Will paradise be far? What a great path Allah has made yunfiqoon to spend in the way of Allah. But all life long we spend our lives and we we forget about nafal. We don't even fulfill the fard zakah. We, uh, we suppress our hands and squeeze hands and there's a punishment on not giving zakah. There's a punishment. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated that when a person when a person assists somebody so that his tight situation disappears, then in this world and the hereafter, Allah makes ease for that person who assisted. This is the path. 
Yes, if somebody is in poverty and destitution and you insist to get rid of that destitution, uh, problems, difficulties, calamities, illness, sickness, when they come on a person, if you give sadaqa, then that sadaqa will remove, eliminate that, that distress, that illness, that problem. Subhanallah. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ This is the third sign Allah Ta'ala has explained and identified and, and defined to us that Ramadan is the month of sharing, distributing, removing the pain from people. So there's another thing we need to practice in this month that we should spend money on people, we should spend in the way of Allah, we should end our miserliness, we should give zakat with happiness, open-heartedly, openly, and increasingly, we shouldn't pull our hands back. No, 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 this is not fard on me. And I can save here, I can save this much. Why? Allah Ta'ala says, my wealth that if I wasn't to take, if I was to take your wealth back, then zakat would end for you. So this is another sign Allah Ta'ala has defined that if you want to attain in Ramadan, you want to, this is the first sign of taqwa is to strengthen iman. Yes, secondly is to start praying salah. And thirdly, to start spending in Allah's way, to have this feeling in your heart, that when Allah gives us money, then we should take out the share for the poor people, that I'll give this much in Ramadan, I'm going to give this much, this is the do the calculation, this much I will give as food to people. If someone's watching or not, we don't care, because there's a lot of reward behind this. Allah's Nabi will be happy with us. And he will be pleased when a person spends in Allah's money. That person can do this who are what? Who are muttaqis. So this month, this can make us a muttaqi. Now we need to see the fast, that if these qualities are being ingrained in us and coming into us and developing to us, if the fast is developing this in us, then most definitely taqwa is coming into us. And if taqwa is coming, then with Allah's grace, our Ramadan is a great month, is becoming a great month, and the change and improvements coming in us. The, the objective that Allah has given Ramadan to us for, then we should improve ourselves, refresh ourselves, and we should strengthen our iman. And if those things are coming, if they are not coming, it's just thirst and hunger, then brothers, uh, situation is very sad, negative. Uh, if we're practicing just the eating and drinking, change the, changing the schedule of eating and drinking and dieting, this is not the month of reducing weight, kilograms. After Ramadan, how much have you lost weight and stand on the weight scales? No. This is not what Ramadan is for. We have to stand on the scale that Allah has given to us. Does taqwa come into me or not? Don't weigh your, don't look at your weight. Weigh those qualities. Have those qualities come into my life or not? There are two types of fasting people. One is those, those after Ramadan. How much weight have I lost in Ramadan? They, they eat more. They eat more. And secondly are those, they say, no, Ramadan was given to us for this reason, we can become muttaqis. So they assess themselves with the measurement gauge of Allah. They have all those qualities and conditions of a muttaqi come into our life. When he looks at those qualities and conditions and characteristics, this characteristic come, this characteristic come, he's grateful to Allah. Allah, Ramadan has changed me, improved me. The objective you gave me Ramadan for, I have attained that, I have obtained it. May Allah Ta'ala give us all such a uh, uh, objective, uh, such success of Ramadan. May Allah Ta'ala decorate Ramadan with this. May Allah, Allah allow us to fast for this reason so that taqwa can come into our lives. Wa akhru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.